Father Neil. Okay. Okay. I'd like to call the meeting to order uh, June 16, 2021. Thank everyone for coming out. Uh, our call to order roll call. Nancy, you have that covered, correct? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Uh, we are going to go into old business, but before doing so, I just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone. Uh, last week, we had a special meeting, and according to my calendar book here, it was our fifth special meeting. And so I, I really want to thank everyone for going above and beyond. Not only that, but we've had uh, 23 regular committee meetings. So it, it, uh, it's been a lot of time. And I just, again, want to make sure we get an opportunity to, to thank everyone for their time and commitment and efforts uh, as they relate to the project. Um, since that special meeting last week, uh, Mark and I presented uh, to the CEEC, which is the Conservation, Energy, and Environment Committee. Uh, in your packets, hopefully everyone saw a draft resolution from that uh, body. Uh, I will just sort of summarize that draft. They are urging us to utilize solar energy, uh, construct with bird-safe glass, uh, retain the two oak trees at Prosser, uh, replace the trees at McMahon Wintonbury due to the expected renovations and to incorporate the physical and programming linkages between Prosser and Philly Park, as well as McMahon and the Bill Lee fields. Uh, so again, I, I believe that draft resolution was in the packet uh, that went out. So hopefully everyone had an opportunity to review it. Uh, it was a really good meeting, but again, those uh, that resolution uh, is what they're urging us to do. And I think most of the things included in there are things that we are already uh, looking at and um, on the same page with. And then next, on Monday, uh, we met with the council and uh, Tai Su did an update on the renderings. Uh, I thought it went pretty well. Uh, we're scheduled to meet with the Finance Committee of the Council on Monday the 21st. And if I could paraphrase the Council, I think that they were pleased with the modifications uh, that have been made and they are looking forward to continued improvements uh, with respect to the design. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to entertain a motion under old business for uh, approval of the minutes from June 9th. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you. Second, Lois. Uh, any discussion in the minutes? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, under <laughs> item seven on the last page, uh, comment from the committee. I would like in person or hybrid meetings, not Zoom or hybrid. Okay. I'm sorry, in person, Bob? In person or hybrid. Okay. Any other comments on the minutes? Okay, all in favor to approve with the noted change, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you so much. Uh, next we'll go into agenda item number four, which is new business and committee updates. Uh, the first one is the external survey and outreach with uh, Maxine. Hi, there is no report at this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, program and space planning uh, with Chair Leah Farrell. Uh, thanks, Craig. Someone's bird is going nuts. Um, <laughs> give, me, give me one second. I apologize. Let me... <laughs> okay. Um, so we met this past Saturday. We had a great meeting. Um, we talked about um, Elizabeth and uh, some other folks from the library met with the Historical Society to talk about the library possibly being becoming the home for some of the important uh, town documents. Um, the subcommittee agrees that this is this is something we have to consider and it's important um, to the town and to our history and to the future. So uh, we need more information on how this would work. It would probably be a, a nominal, it, it wouldn't add square footage or anything. It would just be figuring out where to put the stuff and making sure the space is correct. Um, and then we also talked about um, the space planning report, which um, we feel we need more time to prepare because it's probably going to be, you know, it's going to be part of the, the public record. Um, so we're working on that right now as a group. 
Um, and uh, yeah, does anyone have any questions, comments? Well, I just have one, I just have one comment that you might want to think about. Also, uh, if you're going to do some historical stuff at Prosser, might not be a bad idea to be able to do some of it at, at McMahon as well. Good I point. Think, I, I think the, there might be uh, more space available there for it too, because we got two pieces, and I think we need to to share stuff between both. Okay, we'll uh, we'll take that um, under consideration. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Well, that was quick, Leah. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mark, construction manager. Uh, no report, Mr. Chair. Okay, great. All right, next we'll roll into the director's uh, report. Elizabeth, please. Thank you, Greg. I wanted to start off by announcing we are about to start summer reading. Um, it starts June 21 to August 20th, and that is something for all members of the Bloomfield community to participate in. Uh, we have a brochure that is now live. Everything is free. There are prizes, and I wanted to just say thank you to the Friends of the Bloomfield Public Library for making this program possible. I also wanted to address um, some comments that happened Monday night at the town council meeting. Um, regarding lack of substance um, in terms of what Bloomfield Public Library has to offer. And I wanted to note for the record um, how inaccurate that is. And um, perhaps part of that is due to my not reporting regularly to this committee um, about everything that is going on in the library. So I take a moment today um, to give some highlights. In the last six months, so over 37,000 items have circulated. We have had more than 41,000 digital interactions at our third location, BPL Online. We've had 258 programs with over 5,900 people in attendance. And we've issued 240 library cards. Our programming is excellent, it's responsive, and it's diverse, and that is for all ages. We have an excellent staff, and our staff is state-of-the-art and stays on top of trends that are emerging. I think that in the state of Connecticut, we are trendsetters in terms of what we are doing and where we are looking to go. A big part of our work is making sure the community knows what's going on. And I can assure you that we spend a lot of time making sure that that information is readily available. And one of the ways we do that is through a weekly, weekly newsletter um, that came to fruition thanks to the consultants, Alan and Leslie Berger. And that's through something we call Constant Contact. That goes out every Friday. And I wanted to take a moment today to share what that looks like. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. This is last week's newsletter. At the top, we always have something of note. In this case, we are hosting vaccine clinics um, at McMahon Wittenberry throughout the next month. These are just the first, the next two in that series of events. We always highlight something from our third location, BPL Online. This time around, we highlighted Peterson's Test and Career Prep, a resource that helps people in a variety of ways, taking tests for both academic reasons and to propel people's careers. And then we follow up with events. These are just programs for this week. You'll see the, the book discussion leads it off, then a line dancing program, the Atlantic Magazine Discussion Group, that's a program that I personally lead. Pilates and Tonys that, and Toning, that is in concert uh, with 330 Park. You'll see we list our library building committee, um, a beverages uh, and hydration program, and then Pokemon. Pokemon. We then include some new books that have added to the collection 
And finally, a listing of our services. I can assure you that we have robust programming, robust collections, and we are bursting at the seams. And that's one of the reasons that this library building committee is so important as we move to the future. We need facilities that will sustain our growth and help bring us to the next level in terms of being able to fully serve the 20,000 plus residents of Bloomfield. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Elizabeth? Elizabeth, I would just say thank you for that report. And uh, there's a lot going on and I'm glad that you shared, but I don't think you should feel compelled to substantiate all the wonderful things that happen at the library. Uh, we're full aware and we appreciate you and your team for doing all that you do. But thank you for that report. Lois has her hand up. Elizabeth, I, can you tell me how many full-time employees you have and how many part-time employees? We have 30 total employees. Full-time, I always get, I always fumble with this number, so I'm going to have to get back to you with that. I believe it's 13 full-time. And do they work across both libraries? Yes. The majority of our staff is trained to work in both locations, both physical locations. Um, and that includes library assistants, librarians, and pages. That being said, the majority of our staff is mostly in one location. Um, and then we do have a cross section that's trained at both. Um, prior to the pandemic, there was a plan in place to make sure that all staff rotated. Um, the pandemic put that to a halt. But as we move in a post COVID-19 um, environment, we are looking to have everybody work at both locations. I also want to listen to, when I listened at the council, you got a lot of support um, in terms of the, the services that the library provides. There was only one person who suggested anything less than amazing service. So I hope that any of the people in the community who were listening got the full picture from the balance of the comments. I hope so too. Thank you, Lois. Okay. Any more comments or questions for Elizabeth? <clears throat> if not, I'm going to turn it over to Witt from uh, TSKP and uh, Witt will give us a project update. Okay, thank you. Um, so I will, uh, I was not uh, in attendance uh, the other night on Monday when Taisu presented, but I will walk you through the presentation uh, and do my best uh, imitation of what Taisu <laughs> presented. Uh, so this was the second meeting with the uh, town council uh, serving really as an update of the evolution of the design. So we start with what they had seen uh, at the initial meeting, uh, the initial conceptual rendering of the library. Uh, and then really talked about some of the evolution of the design uh, already based on comments from uh, this committee, from the uh, Design Review Board, as well as from the Town Council, uh, things including reducing the, the scale of the building, more articulation of the exterior, introducing some other uh, possible arched openings, uh, uh, <clears throat> adding some, some uh, sort of variety and scale to the building. So this kind of walked through some of the evolution of various options that were explored uh, and then a further evolution where there was some introduction of brick in the rear wall of the uh, arcade. Uh, so that you have a little more of that uh, suggestion of the uh, brick and white trim uh, that's evident on some of the other buildings in, in the area. Uh, and some of the highlights of, of how things have evolved. I think another comment had to do with uh, fitting the building into the site. And that's obviously something that will evolve further as we get uh, more into the design with uh, landscape design and, and site development. Uh, but there are some suggestions of how we might introduce site walls and places that uh, will create some outdoor spaces for people. Uh, again, this is the view of the site uh, in its uh, existing condition of the existing Prosser. And this is the updated rendering uh, for the daytime view, which uh, illustrates some of those uh, 
updated changes to the elevation, uh, the balcony introduced uh, above the entrance to break the scale down, the brick along the rear wall here, uh, and some of the other evolution of the design, uh, opening up the fins at the ground level so that there's uh, clear visibility out to the, uh, from the library to the east. And then a nighttime view, which really illustrates the, the goal to have some transparency to the building to really display all of the exciting things that Elizabeth and her staff are doing inside the building and draw people in. Uh, and you know, certainly the, the goal is to have this building uh, fit into the town, but also really represent Bloomfield of both now and the future to, to really reach out to the next generations of library users uh, to create a place that they'll want to come and spend time. And uh, uh, that's really, I think, is the goal of, of this project. Uh, Wintonbury uh, Library, uh, existing conditions. This was the original concept view of the addition facing uh, Blue Hills with the alternative uh, wood panel siding on the new addition. Based on some comments, uh, we've looked at a version extending the brick into these new areas. So this is a view uh, with that uh, solid wall material changed to brick. Uh, the other view from the northern angle. Again, this is the new addition portion here and here through the glass, and then modified to uh, extend the brick into that side. So there's just the two materials, the brick of the existing and this new portion, and then the glassy portion of the addition. Uh, and then just walking again through the, the schedule and the process of where we are uh, in this process and how we will uh, be working towards the referendum. And I believe, I didn't see on this presentation and I thought that he also presented the slide of all of the stages that will happen after the referendum. Uh, and so I'm not sure if that was presented the other night. Uh, it's a similar slide to what we presented the other day uh, to uh, you and to the I remember other remember us going that far with. It was, was this as far as he went with it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so that was the extent of the presentation. And uh, as I said, I was not able to attend. I was traveling, but uh, from what I understand, uh, the uh, it went well, and there were some comments, and perhaps Mark and Greg and others who were there can speak to that. So I will open it up to questions. Okay. Are there any questions for Wit or comments? Let me see. Uh, okay. Hearing none, uh, we will roll into, <clears throat> excuse me, the project budget with uh, Downs Construction and Dave, Dave Patrick. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can everyone see my screen? Hopefully. Yes. yes. Okay. So um, very similar format presented in the past. Uh, and what we have done is we have reorganized uh, some of the budgets to be consistent with the way the budget will be when in its final form. What I've done is I've highlighted uh, those categories that have changed. Um, structural steel on both uh, Prosser and McMahon, we have added to these budgets the um, additional structural steel to support the solar panels so that those would become hard cost trade costs of construction. We were asked to expand the um, budget on the bridge that um, I think as it's described to us that at some portion of the bridge would be um, enlarged so that there could be some seating areas. Uh, so we have expanded the material and the labor in both of those categories. Um, <clears throat> for about $46,000 total. In this portion of our estimate, I highlighted these numbers in orange because all of these numbers are a function of the percentage of these totals uh, for the hard cost of construction. So as the numbers up above in these upper categories change, these numbers will also change. 
So I highlighted those. Those are just a function of a, of a percentage. And then in the uh, soft cost budget, we've done a number of a number of things. In the uh, architects and engineering fees, we have added uh, some additional cost for lead silver, uh, both on the energy study side as well as the support from the uh, architectural team. Uh, originally, this number for A and E reimbursables was ten thousand. We elected to split it uh, seventy-five percent for Prosser and twenty-five percent for McMahon. Uh, this, in total, in the total budget, this has not changed, but is is recategorized. Um, in terms of the uh, other consulting costs, <clears throat> we have increased this cost. Uh, we've got a, a number. Uh, now for the um, lead, lead consulting group of 35,000 and then I believe the additional um, uh, permit or uh, certification of 5,000. Um, we have uh, increased the budget for commissioning. And again, we've split that 75% on Prosser and 25% on McMahon. We did the same thing with the owner's rep and clerk of the works. This originally was 150,000. These combined numbers are still 150,000. It's just split 75, 25. On the legal and accounting, which is your, is your bond uh, and, your, and your legal cost on the bonding. Um, this was originally $175,000. It is now $125,000 per project. That is an updated number and an increase to the budget. And then lastly, the swing space, which was uh, originally 120,000, again, is now split 75% uh, to Prosser and 25% to McMahon. Now, what we have done is we have taken out uh, of this budget, the cost of the solar panels. Um, initially, um, we were recommending, or I, I think one of the options is to lease the solar system for five years, which would allow the town to take advantage of some tax credits. And then you would own the solar system after that. Um, but so in this, in this particular um, um, estimate, what we've determined is that because this option was a lease option, that that would not be money that could be bonded. Uh, uh, you cannot bond lease costs. Uh, so that I guess is a topic of discussion as to how we handle that. but. Uh, the solar panels are not included in this budget. And then it comes down to a new total of uh, 28,838. Uh, our previous budget was 28,879,474. Uh, <clears throat> Some things went up, uh, the solar panels came out and that's a revised, that's a revised budget. So uh, Greg, that's, those are the changes that we've made uh, to the budget and um, happy to answer any questions uh, uh, that you all might have. Dave, I have one question. Uh, there were a number of questions having to do with the cost associated with the million dollar grant from the state. And in particular, I think the lead requirements. And so is it safe to say that the totality of those costs are less than $100,000 for what we have to do in order to receive the million dollars from the state. Yes. Yes, I think what you're what you're looking at here. Um, uh, first of all, in our uh, contract, uh, you know, in our in our trade cost construction contract, we always assumed a, uh, a lead silver building. So we, we always had those those costs included in our number. Um, what we didn't have were the costs associated with the uh, additional consulting monies that we would have to spend. So, um, so those total costs are, help me out with, it's uh, 25, 30, 43. Uh, it's about uh, just over $70,000 on the consulting side. Um, what was built into our estimate previous to that, Greg, in terms of, of construction that will meet the lead silver goals is it's generally somewhere between one and 2% of this, of this hard cost number. So if you used one and a half percent, it's about $215,000 uh, that's probably built into those numbers to meet the lead silver. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, one clarification was, uh, I think uh, when I sent Mark some stuff today that um, uh, I guess I'm, I, it sounds as if uh, the state library grant may be treating each of the two libraries separately. If, okay. if that's correct, then the uh, requirement, mm -hmm. the state library requirement for the lead silver would only apply to the Prosser library as it would be over $10 million for the project costs, whereas the McMahon would not. Um, so if, if it's treated separately, they may become two separate um, portions to deal with. Okay. All right. Uh, Bob Berman, I see your hand up. Thank you. Uh, two things. One, uh, we, yes, we're talking about applying for a million dollar grant for uh, McMahon next year. All right, because you only can apply for one a year. I see. And number two is the solar panel issue. Uh, number one, it makes no sense for the town to try and own the panels because there's no tax benefit to the town. If we don't pay taxes. So that doesn't make any sense. You can lease them at no cost to the town for 20 to 25 years, depending on how you want to structure the contract. And for that period of that time of that contract, the lease, whoever you lease them from is responsible for maintenance, replacement, of anything associated with the panels that needs to be dealt with. And what we do is what the town will pay is reduced electrical cost per kilowatt hour used. So that it comes out to where it doesn't cost us anything in terms of putting solar in but it will help reduce operating costs going forward. Uh, the only operating cost that will be a constant would be Eversource's monthly fixed charge, which I believe is $40 currently. Uh, so it, it makes a lot of sense to do solar on both buildings because that's gonna give an incentive to the, to the per, uh, company leasing it to us to lower the rate per kilowatt hour because we're talking a lot more kilowatt hours. Uh, I wanted to point that out. One of the reasons why there doesn't need to be any uh, cost factor in here for solar. In addition, talking about the leads, additional cost because we're applying to the state, we're going to do silver leads anyway. Correct. So there is no real additional cost to apply for the, for the grant because we were going to meet the leads. We intend to meet the lead requirement anyway. So any cost for considered additional cost because we're uh, applying for the state grant to me is irrelevant because there aren't should not be any as we're doing we're going to go silver leads anyway. So I don't know if you have that if this was the other consultant lead is because of the grant. If it is, uh, to me it doesn't belong. We don't need any numbers in there because we do it anyway. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lois. Um, I don't recall any discussion about how we would um, decide what the range arrangements would be for getting the solar panels. Um, we were given a presentation <coughs> about the cost of purchasing them compared to the uh, cost of, of uh, just purchasing the electricity in a modified amount. But I don't think this group ever really talked about whether we should fully purchase them, whether we should have a leasing arrangement, or we should have the kind of le uh, arrangement that Bob is talking about today. And I'm not, I'm really not comfortable going forward with no um, item in the budget for the purchase of the panels themselves until we've had that discussion and understand what the trade offs are. And if Dave Patrick could tell us what uh, it would cost to purchase this system so that we owned it out and out and didn't have the problem with the bonding, which is apparently cropped up. It would be very helpful to me. Dave, do you have that number? I do. So I, um, I thought that we might have this conversation uh, tonight. So what I did in our, uh, this is a, I, I've changed uh, sheets. So this is a, a revision. And I think Lois, this will answer your question. What I've done is I have added the uh, line item for buying the solar panels outright. 
for both Prosser and for uh, McMahon. And when you total that up, that gets you to a grand total of 29,254,000 versus the 28,838. Um, I thought that that was the number that the uh, man gave us when he came in the virology person. Um, yes. And I understood after that, that that was to purchase a leasing arrangement for five years, not that it was outright ownership from the get-go. So the outright purchase is, uh, let's stay with Prosser for one second. The outright purchase would be $263,734. If we went with the five-year lease option, then the cost for the solar panels to the town would be $237,360. And on McMahon, the outright purchase is $84,440 versus a lease option, which would be $76,000. In these, in, in these uh, the, the lease option that I'm talking about would be a five-year lease option, in which case you would lease uh, the panels for this cost from the uh, company for five years. And at the end of five years, you would own them outright. Um, in, the, in the tax credit world, you need to hold the asset, whether it be building tax credits or solar tax credits, you need to hold the asset for five years. So if Verdi were to own the panels for the first five years, they get a tax credit, which equates to a 10% reduction to the town. And at the end of five years, then you would own the panels directly. Um, however- Prevents us from bonding it. Yes, I believe it does because it is a lease arrangement. So my question is why not purchase them outright and bond it? as opposed to waiting for the town council to work this out. Let's go a quick question. I think Ray pros. No, that part of your, I got frozen or you were frozen. Oh. Yeah, Greg's frozen. Yeah. Could I ask a quick question? Does is there any does anybody know how much maintenance on this would cost if the town owns it? Uh, I can tell you that in the um, in the uh, presentation that Verity gave us. On Prosser, I think that they estimated about $2,300 a year for a maintenance budget. And that would start after the first five years. Um, theoretically, we're putting uh, solar panels on a brand new building, on a brand new roof. There really should be very limited uh, maintenance to these panels over the first 20 years. Yeah, I think in general, in terms of these solar panels that, as you said, uh, Dave, there's not really much maintenance. Uh, they do gradually lose uh, their efficiency, a certain percentage over time, not a huge portion. Uh, yeah. and, and then it's really just a question of insurance, you know, in case a, a tree falls on them or something or a hailstorm or something that damages them, that, yeah. that you need that insurance coverage. Yeah. And, and one thing I do want to note, um, Greg, in your opening comments, you talked about um, the, being encouraged to keep both of the oak trees uh, at Prosser. And one of the oak trees um, will create um, a little bit of a shading problem on the solar panels. So there's a trade off there. Uh, if you, I, I, thought, I thought in the original concept, and Whit, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the one oak tree was going to come down in anticipation of the roundabout or the rotary that was going to be uh, installed. Uh, but in addition to that, a byproduct of that is that if that oak tree does come down, it is beneficial to the sunlight, uh, the direct sunlight hitting the solar panels uh, to make them a little bit more efficient. 
I, I think the other thing related to one of those trees was there was a concern about its health. Uh, and I think there is a suggestion that there may, they may need the town arborist to take a look at it to see, you know, whether it's going to survive uh, in the in the near future. Okay. That's correct. We're waiting for a report from the uh, town arborists uh, with respect to the condition of that tree. Okay. But the trees. Yeah, I'm not sure if that tree that was in questionable health is the same one that virology was identifying as potentially shading or if it's the other tree. Any other comments or questions? Mark has his hand up. Yeah, um, so with the, uh, the difference between uh, the lease arrangement and the outright purchase is the is that tax savings, um, which is about 10% of that cost, correct, Dave? Yes. About 10% of the cost. Um, but what it does is if we, if we do the lease, um, it, it throws the, uh, um, the implementation of the solar panels into the operating budget of the facility, um, which we don't have control over. Um, so to save the money, we would have to take a leap of faith that uh, the town is going to pursue uh, installing the solar panels um, in, in some fashion, either, either that lease arrangement we're talking about, five years to own, or the other arrangement where there's nothing or very, very little out of pocket uh, and there's cost savings in the, in the energy usage. Um, so, th so that's the differences between them that I see. And, and the other difference that I see is presenting, you know, one bottom line to the finance committee next week versus a different one next week. So, you know, those are all the things I think we need to consider right now. And I agree with Lois, we didn't really have a, you know, we really haven't had this conversation all the way through as a committee. Um, and, and I don't honestly know that we have all the information we need to, you know, to ultimately make that decision. We know we know we want solar panels, um, and so, uh, you know, we could take the tack that the dollars to buy it should be in the budget, uh, and down the road, if it comes out of operating budget instead for some sort of lease deal or power sharing deal, then we're just not spending that money. Um, but it's a, uh, uh, you know, I think we need to make that decision tonight, I think. So we, we know what we're going to be presenting to the finance committee next week, what we're, what we're recommending to them. Uh, so that, I, I, I think that summarizes the, the differences between these, between these options. Bob uh, Berman. Thank you. Uh, I kind of agree with Mark, and yet I, I, I don't entirely with him. Uh, I think there really are two options. One, we buy the panels, or two, we lease them for a period, an extended period of time where it costs us nothing to get the panels installed. And the only cost is going to be operating in the operating budget going forward. But it's going to reduce by doing panels. It reduces the operating costs significantly, and I, I think we, I, my thinking right now is that when this is presented to the finance committee next week, uh, we point out that we have put in here the cost for purchasing outright solar panels, and then that we're also looking at the possibility of leasing them which means we don't have any upfront costs, but there will be ongoing operating costs, which would still be substantially less than what the current operating costs are. So we're aware of those two. We don't know which, which way it's gonna end up being more advantageous at this point in time. That, that may be the approach to take. I would be much yes. happier with that approach to build yes. in full costs of purchasing the solar panels yep. into the budget and say that we're examining what is the most um, 
I would say both responsive, responsible and economic approach. I think to leave the solar panels out and leave it up to an organization which has many, many other demands on it in the future is a mistake. I think we need to do this package. This is supposed to be a library, what did Witt say, for the next generation and for Bloomfield of the future. If we don't ensure that it has those solar panels, doesn't matter what else we do. The most important thing is climate change. So I think we have to make sure it happens. I would just chime in, and Lois, I, I agree. I think that we should include it uh, with the information on the budget that we submit to the Finance Committee, but we should also have another document that uh, includes the lease because we need to get a commitment from the council one way or the other, uh, particularly if it's a lease situation that we would have the operating costs covered uh, by the town. And uh, I, I'm assuming that Lois, that is your biggest concern about whether or not the operating dollars would be captured and supported for this project on an ongoing, for the five years. Yeah, and I'm also interested in the economics of it. Um, I'm not sure the, the savings for owning them, um, even with the initial lease arrangement, was uh, over $700,000 over the course of the 35 years. That's serious money. And I'd like to compare that to the savings um, that we would have from an arrangement where we paid nothing and just got a benefit from the lease. I don't think this is rocket science. I think these panels get put up there um, and they, they're not difficult to maintain. And I don't think it's, it's that complicated that the operating costs would be so, so onerous. But what I did hear is that 98% of the energy that's required in the library could be supplied by these solar panels. I think that's major. Okay, let me see if there are any other. Ava has her hand up. Ava. Yeah, the re that's, um, I'm agreeing with Lois. That's actually the reason I asked about maintenance because that was the one thing that had not been clear. We, we had no idea whether that was, um, a large figure that would be a soft cost for the town successively or not. Even if this council were to say to us, yes, we will support the solar panels, councils change. And we have no idea if a subsequent council might change their mind. And I would not like to see the building without this or the town without it or any of the other, you know, ecosystems that are affected because a political change has meant that the project, it doesn't go forward. So I, I think, you know, if the town then decides they're gonna cover the cost and it, it, it doesn't uh, require the expenditure, great. But I think Lois is right that you make sure you're gonna have it first and then you can chat about that later if, if things work out. Right, okay. All right, uh, we'll take one more comment. And uh, Dave, I just wanna make sure I'm clear on this. If we lease to purchase, I mean, that cost would roughly be $50,000 a year for five years? If you do the five-year lease to purchase option, you would pay the initial upfront cost on McMahon of 76,000 and 237,360 on Prosser. And then you would make no payments for five years. And at the end of five years, in essence, you would own the system for a dollar. Now, I would also agree with, with uh, Mr. Berman that there are other leasing arrangements that we can look into that might be a longer term lease and might have a, a, a more beneficial uh, 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 benefit. To, to the town as well, to not put that money, all that money up front right away. More of a traditional lease arrangement. Um, uh, but the one, that, the one that is being suggested by Verigy, the reason they do it on five years, as I said, is because they hold the asset for five years, they take advantage of the tax credits, they pass on 10% uh, cost savings to the town, and then, and then at the end of it, they, they turn over the ownership to the town. 
Um, but I, I would also agree with Lois. It's it's a fairly, I mean, it's a simple it's a simple um, discussion, but there's a lot of detail and some complexity in it as to how you organize this financing and how you pay for the solar panels, all of which are a huge benefit to um, a, a huge benefit and cost savings over the long term. Um, not to mention the benefit to the environment. Okay, great. Uh, Dave Velasco. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to recommend that uh, the director of DPW and the facilities team has a chance to weigh in on this as well, since they're the ones that ultimately will have to, uh, once the project is done, it be can, uh, turned over to them and they'll have to handle the maintenance and the operation of the solar panels. So I think that personally that they should have a, a say or you know maybe a recommendation um, towards this project. Okay. Or not the project, but the solar panels themselves and how we'll move forward them. Okay, great. But I, I think what I'm thinking here is uh, maybe what we do is uh, take a motion to move this as our recommended budget uh, to the finance committee. And in this budget, we include the cost of the solar panels and uh, finance committee, along with other research or discussion, we will determine which is the best course of action as it relates to, uh, to solar. Uh, but I think the best case would be to include it and we could always take it out and you know, do whatever uh, the finance committee and the council deems best uh, for the project. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move that we present to the finance committee uh, a budget for Prosser and yeah, I'm grumbling that Budanzi is so pissed and we're so mean that she might. Uh, um, a, it's only 29, I, why is this not moving? Is that ahead, Bob, sorry. We present to the Finance Committee a uh, total budget for Prosser McMahon totaling 29254 540 at this point in time which includes the cost of solar panels. And we discussed with, and a discussion with them is that we don't know for sure exactly what direction we're going with solar panels. Second. Okay, any discussion on that motion? I, I would wanna be sure that the council understands or the finance committee understands that the solar panels, however, they are done, will be anticipated to be part of the original build of the project and not something that will be added when the town gets around to it. That those of us who have worked on this project see them as an integral part of the project. Thank you. And, and Lois, once again, you know, the solar recommendation recommendation is what we are pushing forward. That's what we want. And that's what we are going to recommend to council for the total project. It's just what form of solar we have. But yeah, I agree with you totally with that. Any oh, other wow. questions on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify. Can we have the screen? Uh, uh, who's this? Sorry. Dave. There you go. All in favor, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. And I would just ask Dave, Patrick, if you could send me that second budget that includes the purchase of the solar. I will do that. Thanks, Dave. OK. Uh, next meetings. Our next meeting is June 30, and following that, we'll be meeting on July 14th. Again, as we've discussed, we'll be with the Finance Committee on this coming Monday. And uh, committee comments next. Any comments from the committee? Bob Berman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm glad to see this meeting went as smoothly as it did. Uh, and I think we're moving in the right direction. I agree wholeheartedly with Lois that uh, solar panels are an integral part of this project. It needs to be. 
I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, I'm not, I would like to point out that we need, we need to keep moving forward. I agree with that wholeheartedly. But if we can limit the special meetings going forward, that would be greatly appreciated because I think we've now met five weeks in a row, something like that. We've had too many special meetings. I, I understand the need for them, but it's getting to, to be a drag in terms of preparing for them and, and being able to fit, fit them in the schedule. Uh, especially over the summer, it's going to be even tougher, even though we're doing it by Zoom. Uh, and lastly, the meeting on 630, I may be a little bit late for that. We are going to good speed in the afternoon. So I'm not sure what time we'll be back because that is, I think it's Bennett and Streisand. All right. We're definitely going to see that. All right. Uh, Bob, point well taken with respect to the special meetings and I will work uh, to uh, do a better job of managing the process. Uh, Mark? Yeah, this is a real milestone. I, I mean, we now have a recommended budget. We have uh, a program for the building and a concept for the building. And we have uh, pretty much done our charge for a 21st century library, library system. So this is huge tonight. Uh, we're gonna be presenting you know, to the council and, and uh, committees and uh, you know, I don't, I don't think as a group, I think we should be really proud as a group of what we've accomplished over this period of time, regardless of how many meetings we had to have. So I'm, I'm really pleased with, with all of this. Thank you. Nancy? Yes, I have um, two comments. First of all, for those of you who weren't able to attend or watch the uh, meeting at the building, to, uh, the town council on Monday night, the town council passed unanimously the notice of intent to apply for the state library grant. And Elizabeth has been working diligently on um, gathering the additional materials she needs to be able to just submit the grant. You'll recall that um, she is the one that has been tasked with submitting that. Um, secondly, I just wanted to give everyone an idea of the schedule going forward. Um, Monday night, as Greg had identified uh, the 21st, is the town council finance subcommittee where the project budget will be presented. Um, also at Monday night's town council meeting, they authorized the preparation of bonding resolutions. Um, our bond council um, will be preparing those and will be submitting them to the town council on June 28th. And then in July, there'll be a meeting where there'll be a, another town council meeting and a public meeting Based on that, there'll be a TPZ hearing in July, what's called an 824 hearing. And then the anticipated schedule now is that the town council will um, vote the first meeting in August to put the project on the ballot for November 2nd. So that's the, the um, schedule in a nutshell. Okay, Leah. I just want to say that I'm I'm really excited um, to see what happens with my childhood library and uh, this being the third go around um, getting so far in the process is just really exciting and uh, that's my comment. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I would just like to thank Greg. Um, I don't think it's easy to do this. And I think he's done an extraordinary job of listening to everybody and letting everybody be heard and trying to reach accommodations that work for people. So I thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Any more comments before we move on to public comments? Okay. Nancy, we have anyone from the public? Yes, we have uh, Mark Saunders. Hi, thank you. Um, first, I'd like to thank the, this whole committee for an incredibly difficult job uh, trying to make everyone happy in town. And uh, I'm really happy to be a part of this meeting. 
Um, we have uh, lived in Bloomfield for some 26 years, and our, our house currently has solar panels on it that um, have been in place for about seven or eight years. Um, and it's a, it's a slanted roof. So my question, I have a couple of different questions, but one of them is um, with a flat roof, and will the solar panels be, be angled in some particular way to take advantage of the sun because the, the direct sunlight is how those panels work um, at their optimum, and if it's just installed flatly on the roof, I'm wondering about the efficiency of that, and uh, um, also whether or not, if there are angled um, solar panels on the roof, whether they would actually show up from the street, and would that be a part of the rendering that would need to be uh, shown also? I'm curious to see uh, what that might look like uh, with solar panels on it. Um, another question that I have is the um, I, I'm sorry I joined the game late, um, so that's on me, um, but uh, was the, the cost of setting up temporary libraries um, for both of these libraries while the construction is being done, is there a rough number that, that you can give me on, on that? I'm just curious what that is. And lastly, um, whether the projects are, <clears throat> are going to be done at the same time or whether one library is done first and then and then the second. Um, so I'll, I'll, that's it for me. Thanks. I can speak to the solar panels um, that I know typically for year round uh, TV generation, having them angled somewhere close to the latitude, uh, which is around 42 degrees here, is kind of ideal for year round uh, generation. And so they're on a flat roof, it's typically mounted on a rack system lifts up the rear portion of it so you achieve the angle that's needed um, whether or not it would be visible to be determined as we develop the design further the uh, it depends on how close to that leading edge of the building roof they would end up being positioned the, the layout that um, the, the uh, solar consultants showed had them somewhat back towards the rear portion of the of the roof in which case they wouldn't be particularly visible uh, but that that's to be determined I'll let others answer the other questions. I can answer those. It's $120,000 for the uh, swing space, and the projects are anticipated to be done concurrently, Mr. Saunders. Concurrently. Okay, thank you. All right. We have. So, yes, now we have Pearson. Penny Pearson. Thank you. I just have a quick question, uh, design related. Um, I, as I've listened to the council, I think it's clear they are expecting the external design to continue to evolve. Um, and I was curious in the uh, presentation, there's options A, B, and C of the external design. A and B are familiar to us um, from uh, previous uh, evolution. Um, but the option C, I was wondering if that had been discussed by the committee at any point or if there was uh, a reason that that uh, more traditional design, it, it almost appears that there could be some brick framing the windows, uh, not unlike what's happening in the Hartford Public Library um, with, with the Lyric Theater. Um, so I was just wondering if option C had been considered by anyone, and if not, if there was a reason, why not? Thank you. What do you want to respond to that? I mean, sure. I, I think it's it's uh, as I think I indicated on the presentation, the design is continuing to evolve, and that's what that was meant to indicate. Is we have been looking at a number of options of how things might be modified, uh, and is by no means set yet. Uh, this is very early concept design, uh, and the development of the design will really happen in earnest uh, after the referendum when we move into true schematic design. Uh, and so the uh, exploring some of these options of materials has been a result of comments from this committee and other committees that we've met with. And so we have tried to be responsive to look at those. Nothing has been set yet in terms of the final direction. Next we have Gail Riley. Hi, Gail Riley, 8 Maple Avenue. I don't know if this has been um, asked before, but 
Where will the sw the swing space be for the library? When to be determined. determined. Okay, thank you. That was it. Oh, okay. Anyone else from the public wish to speak? You can raise your hands. No one else has raised their hand. All right. Uh, before I entertain a motion to adjourn again, I wanted to once again thank everyone uh, for your time, your effort, and uh, making this project. Uh, date, like Mark, I'm very excited about where we are tonight and the process, and looking forward to the project evolving. And for those who can make it on Monday to the Finance Committee meeting, please. And I believe we're scheduled to appear before the council on the. You know, I believe it is. Uh, we will make sure that everyone is fully informed of the scheduled meetings. But again, thank you all. And thank folks who have been attending some of the committee meetings, uh, the Design Review Board, the CEEC, all the various uh, beautification, other meetings that uh, we have been presenting at. Uh, it's been an onerous process, but we're very excited. And uh, we could not be in a place where we are without all of your efforts. And uh, Looking forward to meeting with the uh, Finance Committee on Monday. With that being said, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Bob and Bob, all right. Uh, good night, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll be in contact.